Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shintar Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the gameness of Judo or Jiu Jitsu. We're going to talk about things that win actual matches. But before we do, we got to give a huge shout out to our sponsors. Go ahead, Peter. Levon and Jason, thanks a lot. Amazing yeah. dudes, thank you guys. Thank It's because of you guys that we could keep these shows going. So please, if you guys are listening, join our Discord, join our Patreon, do all that stuff. Buy our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Videos mostly. Yeah. Right, reach out to me with seminar requests, right? You can find me on Instagram at Judo Shintar NYC. Yep, yep. All the good stuff. Yep. All right. All the good stuff. All right, so back to the main program. So what are we actually talking about? Yeah. You you kind of gave me a general idea, but you wanted to get the conversation going. What the... Yeah. So it all started like we're training, right? Yeah. At jiu -jitsu in the, I train Jiu Jitsu in the mornings. Everyone knows that. Uh, and they're talking about like winning and losing by advantages. Yeah. And advantages in jiu-jitsu is like you pull guard or whatever it is and you go for an armbar. You almost get an armbar. The person slips out. That's an advantage. You're passing someone's guard. You're trying to pass someone's guard. Almost pass someone's guard, mm -hmm. right? But then you don't and you get an advantage. And let's just say now you sit in the guy's close guard for the rest of the time. Yeah. The person that takes that advantage point wins the whole thing. There's no actually even points. Oh, right? you can win by yeah, an advantage. It could be 0-0 zero, zero, yeah. and you can win by an advantage. Okay. And a lot of matches are won and lost this way. Uh, and you know, obviously, people are very quick to criticize something like that. Yeah. Like, oh man, this is stupid. This is garbage. The rules don't work. Uh, and then you know, I'm quick to kind of make those judgments myself. But if you look at judo, shidos yeah. or penalties really determine the shape of the match all the time. Right, right. And no one's really training for it. Mm. Right. Yeah. Not a lot of people are training for it. And it's sort of like we did like a soft skill versus hard skill thing. Uh, but the hard skill is to actually throw the person, the technical yeah. stuff. But when you're learning it in the context of the judo room, you're never really taking into consideration how many penalties are on the on the scoreboard, or like where you are in relation to the out of bounds yeah. area, right? What sort of managing up you are doing to the ref? Mm -hmm. Oh, even right? like dealing with uh, the ref, dealing with the ref. You know, because when you get a penalty in Japan, shido or shido yeah. means like instruction yeah. so it's like an instructional tool hey you're not doing something right you know here's a little bit of a thing and, right and you're supposed to bow to them or something right? and you say thank you very much for the instruction yeah. <laughs> as opposed to like the American <laughs> way he's like oh, oh no. off. like what am I going to freaking bow to <laughs> right so even like uh, I don't want to say managing but always being polite interact yeah. with those guys you know after the match you know if you disagree with something hey can you help me understand why I was penalized for this thing yeah. you know and most of the time you know in the midst of the match you don't really understand what's going on so you get heated that shouldn't have been whatever it is and then you're arguing with the ref and then you go back to watch footage of you actually competing and you're like oh I get it mm. you know I, I stepped out in the red or like oh, that doesn't look like an actual attack well, it sounds to me you're, you want to talk more about like how to train managing matches, match management. But is, is, that what, is that what I'm getting? Kind of. You know, yeah. So for context of what we're talking yeah. about, we're trying to come up with a title for the podcast. <laughs> but I don't go, like... You don't like match yeah, management. I don't like it, you know, and like there's just so many... It's a soft skill, uh -huh. right? As opposed to a hard skill. But we already did like a soft yeah. skills, yeah. hard skills kind of a thing. And yeah, check out that episode, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but it's not even that, right? It's like if you're in a company, if you work in a corporate environment, yeah. how to appeal to the higher ups to make it look like you're doing more work, <laughs> right? And those office politics, all these things kind of play a role in who gets to move up. So I get, I think it goes right? back to, you know, you always talk about how you should determine what your goal is doing judo, BJJ. Is it yeah. for... Fitness, self-defense, uh, but some, for some of you, it might be to win competitions. Yes, uh, but this then, is the thing, right? Yeah. Maybe you're not into competitions at all. Yeah. But training in this way where you're thinking not just what's going on like skill-wise, right? You're keeping track of what happened the exchange before that, mm. what happened the exchange before that, mm. and even this exchange now, what should happen? Because in judo, there's a lot of exchange, right? So and the way I say exchange, it's like, it's like these mini rounds. Right, right. Me and you come out, we're scrambling, I go for something, I go for something, we go out of bounds, stop. That's one exchange. Mm. One chunk of time, right? Between the referee saying start and stop. That's one exchange, okay? 
maybe you try to take me down with a drop Senagi nine times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> we go <laughs> we go down to the ground. I try to force the wazi word stop going we end in the stalemate, referee goes, Stop. Yeah. That's another exchange. Right? Keeping track of those two exchanges and trying to win as many of those as possible, whether it's actually not scored, but who's the aggressor, right? Who pushed who out of bounds, who was mostly defending. You know, it's like possessions. Yeah. In a football game yeah. or a soccer match. Yeah. Right? In soccer match, it's like, oh, this team had 70% of the time that possession of the ball. You know, that doesn't always mean that they win the game. Mm-hmm. Right? Right, right. But if you have the ball more, then you're taking more shots. It's So, <coughs> I, I think I'm, I'm kind of getting a better idea. So, yeah. I've been, I've been playing a lot of golf lately. Oh, yeah. my God. So <laughs> I know. God. Well, it's just, uh, it's like a thing uh, my wife and I started doing. <laughs> but there's two aspects in golf, right? I, as with any other sport, like you said, it's, um, yeah. you can learn, how, you can be the best ball hitter. Like you can hit the ball straight, like 300 yards every time. But that doesn't mean you're a good golfer because there's an aspect of how to manage like it's they call it course management, but it's like yeah, yeah. they're like there's a, there are hazards like there are like there's a little pond, there's a little like bunker yeah. in front, and what if you get into that? You know how, do how you many get, beers you drink? Yeah, exactly. There. How many beers? Yeah. And then yeah. you know, is uh, are people behind you holding? You know, like are, are people in your group yeah. hitting better than yours? As a psychological aspect. <laughs> definitely so, definitely so it's not you're saying judo is not about like executing those throws every time perfectly it's more about when you get into the randori level there are more variables to think about you know it's like a more holistic approach yeah there's definitely like a holistic approach but it's being mindful and keeping track <clears throat> understanding where you are relative to the other person yeah. in terms of like spatial awareness and stuff and where you are inbounds out of bounds and then adding on to that the hard skills right uh-huh. so using let's say for instance you're in that corner where the out of bounds meets right that corner edge how you use that properly oh well, i i think right? i think yeah. what you said is right being being mindful how to be mindful yeah so it's like More and it trains being mindful yeah. right like when you're doing judo for self-defense or mma for self-defense you're not, you're just it's you versus the other person yeah right but when you train in this manner, when you're looking at the clock or whatever it yeah. is, like there's always a clock. Yeah. Right? The moment you're getting mugged and you're screaming for help and you're scrapping, there's a finite amount of time until the police get there. <laughs> yeah, and I guess beat you, you both up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So it's like that that's a time period. Yeah. So there is a timeline thing, right? And then like understanding, you know, like if you're shoving and pushing the guy uh, on the street, on the sidewalk, outside of a bar, and then, you know, you scramble in for a double and you're running, and then sometimes, right, like, you just run them into the, the street sometimes. That's happened. I've seen that before. I, I've been, uh, you know, mm. uh, in that before, oh. right? When, like, when you're like, oh, shoot, he's swinging, duck um. on the, you, you're taking that double, and it's not quite deep enough to, like, lift him and slam him, Right. But they're like backpedaling away, but they're backpedaling towards the street. And then it's like you were both scrambling. And then you're like sliding between the cars onto the street. And then if there was a car coming, you get yeah, hit. Yeah. Right? So like inbounds, out of bounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? In New York City, you have those uh, pile of garbage or like those little sections where they segment off for like little plants. Yeah. And then running a double into something, into someone over that thing could trip them pretty good. Yeah. Right? So it's like being aware of that kind of stuff and then training in this like environment where you're taking into the environmental context and then the time, like those two things can help you in a self defense context as well, not just winning judo matches. You see what I'm saying? I see. I think it's more yeah. that, yeah, I think it being how to be mindful, I think that's a good title. I think that's what you're trying mm. to say. It's, uh, yeah. it's, you're not just going about like doing randoris, like, oh, like mechanically, like, oh, I do this, you know. Um, yeah, I saw a video Shintaro setting up the Seiwinage throws like this and that and you know it's not about that it's more mm. being mindful of the whole situation and then if you have a, yeah. another goal like self-defense you can kind of make the connection between mm. your judo training or BJJ training what have you yeah. into your ultimate goal yes is Maybe. it? <laughs> 
<laughs> and I want to gatekeep some of these exercises. You know, I, I usually don't gatekeep any information at all. Oh, you want to right? gatekeep a little? When I'm trying yeah. to like teach judo in the room, I'll just do it. Yeah. I'll show it. I'll put it on the video. You know, people are always like, "Oh, don't you want to keep the best technique stuff for yourself?" But I'm like, "Nah, not really. Like, it's it's good for me to just put it all yeah. out there. Everyone has access to it. Yeah. Judo gets better." You know, we had a visitor recently, an international visitor who took like uh, a medal in his own respective country, and he had such good judo, yeah. and it was so like familiar. Yeah. And he was like, dude, I, I wa I've been watching your videos for, you know, three, four years now, right? And I was oh. like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know? Anyway, this is an exercise that we did. The person has their back to the out-of-bounds area. Yeah. If you physically just shove them out of bounds, you're going to get penalized. Yeah. You can't do that in judo, right? Because all they want for you to do is to take the person down. And if you're not actively going towards that, you get penalized. Yeah. So... You do an inside trip, Ochigari, mm. and you're pushing him out of bounds while you're trying to throw Ochi. But you're not trying to finish the Ochi, you're just trying to push him out of bounds. Mm. Okay? Once they get to that red area, you're going to box them out right, by angling off to keep them there. And then they're going to make sudden movements to one direction to run past you, kind of get by yeah. you. And that's when you try to time a Taiyo if it's this direction, a Sasai if it's to that direction. I see. Right? So planning that where you're using right you're manipulating the person into like getting them so that their back is getting closer and closer right. to the red zone okay and obviously boxing does this right yeah. boxing you talk about cutting off lanes and like putting their back yeah. to the ropes things like that but judo no one physically trains this and when you're wrestling in cause no one really training this kind of stuff too they're just like watch out for the line or don't step out or whatever it is mm. but i think there's they don't take merit. advantage of the bounds yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some people do. Every all the best guys do, do this yeah. naturally, you know. And when you see it in actuality, you're like, "Wow, that was so masterful." But most people don't realize what's actually going on, mm. you know. And let's just say you have two defensive posture or two penalties on the board. The third one, you're done. Yeah, yeah. So you're using a tactic like this, like, "Hey, two exchanges." You know, you have two penalties. The third one, I'm boxing you out, and then I'm trying to force you. Out. You're like, "Oh man, if I get another one, it's over." Right. 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 So they're really going to try to fight out of that position, and that's when something big opens up. Yeah, yeah. You know? So like really working that kind of an angle. I see. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Or even like when the guy goes for drop saying agi, mm. you could defend it, or try to force a false attack by cutting and staying standing on your feet. Because if they go for a drop saying agi, and if you cut and stay standing, they're going to call that guy for a false attack. Right. I think I guess right. you're trying to be. You're saying it's more than just mind, being mindful. It's more about being strategic. Yeah, it is strategy. Yeah, but it's not like how to throw the guy. It's like kind of gaming the rule sets and finding different ways to win. Yeah, right, right. But be, you ever play Catan? Yeah, I, I love Catan. Yeah, so it's not just like building. It's about like getting the longest. Road yeah, yeah. You the, can win it in different ways. Yeah. yeah, there's different paths to victory. Yeah. And I'll never forget, like, Ishii, you know, when he won the Olympics, he, like, was penalizing everybody. He's just out-hustling, yeah. out-hustling, non-combativity penalties, just flying at the other guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've seen guys win championships like this. Not a point scored on the board, but just forcing penalties. And is that, like, a true martial way? No. Yeah. But you're winning. Yeah. And these skills can be taught. These skills can be learned. So doing some. Of this, and obviously you don't want to be like just a loophole guy. Right, right. You know, you're just like constantly just spamming and playing to the rules all the time. You don't want to be that guy. But it's very, very beneficial to use that and then integrate it into your training. I think. So now these guys who are competing mm. can learn how to win. Yeah. These guys who are want to go back and think about their matches and analyze their own training, they could they have to be mindful enough to keep track of what happened in these exchanges, right? These stop and goes. How many stop and goes are there? You know, usually training, but five minutes on the clock, you're just going the whole time. Yeah. Right? It's constant go. But in an actual match, right. stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. It's actually not five minutes. If it's a five-minute match, it's more like eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, you know, how do you account for this stuff? How do you keep track? And how do you have exchange goals? Like goals like, okay, first two exchanges happen. Mm -hmm. It's minute two and a half now. I probably have a 30-second go here of like a hard burst. <clears throat> how, what is my goal here? Uh huh. All right. Do I want to put a penalty on the board? Do I want to get an advantage on the board if you're doing jujitsu? And it's not always just going for a takedown. Yeah. You know, maybe you're setting up something deeper later down the line, and in the meantime, you're accumulating 
advantages or right. making the other person get penalized, right? So training in this way, these are soft skills and then managing the referee and then appealing to the referee in a way where it's not kind of a douchey thing. Yeah. You know, so these are the kind of things that I'm really thinking about and working on. Um, you guys actively practice yeah. this at the dojo? We kind of just started. Okay. And because it's so new, I don't want to make a video about it. Be like, hey, guys, I don't yeah. want everyone just like gaming the thing. And it kind of takes away from the sport a little bit. Yeah. But I think it's a very important skill that's often super overlooked. Right. You know, and I think there's guys like, for instance, I know kids programs that only teach over the back Koshiguruma Uranage. Yeah. Right. And they get away with that and win. And drop Sanagi, three moves. Yeah. That's it. And they win all the kids' tournaments, right? But I'm sure there's programs that can just take the rules of judo, who know the rules of judo, and just run with that and just force penalty, force penalty, force penalty, grip fight, grip fight, transition yeah. to the ground. You know, time management, right? Burning the clock in the waza as you transition down to the ground. Like, there's people who could probably do this and win tons of matches, intermediate level, high right. level, advanced level. You know, obviously, you gotta, like, you know, not suck at judo also. That's why I'm calling this a soft skill. You know, there's when you're in the corporate world, there's things you can say, <laughs> things you cannot say, and you have to like stick to kind of these rules, right? And if you do zero work, then of course you're going to get fired. Right, right. But you could do minimal amounts of work, be really good at office politics, have really strong soft skills, and then, you know, maximum efficiency, the, yeah. minimal effort. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, and it's a big piece of it that gets overlooked. So that's sort of my thinking right now. Like, I'm thinking a lot about it. You know, and, uh, yeah. So it, and, you know, there's statistics yeah. on this stuff, too. Like, in wrestling, they say, like, the person who scores first, uh -huh. usually it's a takedown, yeah. right? Because they started yeah. their feet neutral. person who scores first has a 73% likelihood of winning the match. Mm. Something like that, you know? And it's like, yeah. oh, if you get scored on, you have, like, a 73% <laughs> chance of losing. You know, like, that's a huge statistic to overcome. Yeah. Right? And then, so, like... Uh, there's things that we don't see, I think, that we can sort of train for, you know, and so yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing, you know. So it's, yeah, it's not even being mindful. I mean, I, I, I think yeah. ultimately it's just like soft skills. Like we're going to, you're like trying to focus more on the soft side, soft skills side of judo. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not like the soft skills that we talked about yeah, yeah, before. Yeah. Like critical thinking skills yeah. or like uh, ability to take constructive criticism. It's like a little bit different from that too, you know. It's like gameness. I don't know what you guys would call it. If you guys are listening and watching this on YouTube, like, give us some suggestions. It's already too late because we already put it out. <laughs> like, give us the suggestion for the I'll title. I'll look something up. I'll think of something too. Yeah, yeah. Peter will think something. He's a genius. I'm fine. So, yeah. Maybe I'll ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Yeah. That's a good idea, though, right? Yeah. It's a very cool thing, you know. Right. Yeah. And then uh, you know they're going to be pushing back when their back is to the thing. And how do you, you, you should have a Tomonage game, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know? Tomonage, and then you go to Tomonage, and now all of a sudden you're trying to work the clock. How do you sweep them from here, mm. you know, in a way that you're not going to get penalized and force Nawaza? And even Nawaza, man, it's not about choking the guy or turning and pinning the guy, too. A lot of times it's just about creating motion to keep the clock running. Yeah. And that's a skill in itself, right? Most guys who use Nawaza as a tool to win are not turning over everybody and pinning them or choking them or arm barring at will. That's not what they're doing. You know, they're using it to sap the opponent's gas tank. Yeah. Work the clock. There's many, many ways to use Nawaza as a tool to win. A lot of this stuff is not trained, mm. you know? So it's like, that's a good thing that we might do at the dojo too. It's like, all right, guys, to, for a minute, your goal is to create motion while you're in top position uh. in turtle. So, you know... Um, you mentioned yeah. this too, but like there must, there are, there's gonna be pushback to this type of approach, right? There is. I, yeah. Obviously, this has to run concurrently with actually yeah. doing judo. You know, if you're just doing this and winning, uh, you're just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you're not like that. Then you're not playing, you know, the, the same spirit game. Spirit really. of the game, whatever. The, yeah, yeah, spirit of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the best guys in the world already do this. Yeah. Right? So it should be in the training regimen somehow, you know? So it's more like... And yes, there's criticism. Yeah, if you're just doing this stuff, like, you're kind of having to focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's okay, you know? Like, take it or leave it. You know, if you want to win at all costs, this is your, yeah. your path to victory. It's like this. You know how you said in Japan, 
because a lot of these judo athletes have so much mat time under their belt yeah. that a lot of these things come naturally and they yes. you know without yes. being explicitly yep. taught but yeah uh well i'm talking about techniques here like the, you yeah. know grip breaks yeah. and whatever but you know here in america especially for hobbies we just don't have enough mat time so it has to be more directed and guided explicitly yes. and then you're yeah. on a lot of, on the other side of the coin you know all these soft skills you talked about yeah. like management yeah. skills need to be taught explicitly in america should be and you know the better you are at judo right and the more you're like all right i can throw this guy anytime i want this guy has zero shot of throwing me yeah eh, might as well just like rack up some penalties and advantages you know what i mean <laughs> yeah right might as well right i know this guy's going for a drop saying hey, it's gonna suck yeah Right, so I could cut it, you know, maybe score once. He goes for a drop saying night again, cut it, and then just run the clock out, maybe 30, 40 seconds, do it again. And it's a much safer way of approaching because if I say, you know what, uh, I can throw this guy at will, he'll never throw me, but I just lock up 50 50 every time and stay in yeah. there blasting away. <clears throat> There's a good chance I make a mistake and I get caught, right? So it's another way to circumvent and reduce risk. Reduce risk and, yeah. to, and force your opponent to make mistakes so it's easier, even easier to throw your opponent. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, I don't know how this kind of, uh, you know, like there's a double pull rule in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really know the rules of jiu-jitsu so much, so I can't really speak to it. But there's all these things that are invisible that you can't really see. That can. Be... What's a double pull rule? So if we pull guard at the same time... Uh. What happens? Yeah. It's the whole thing. Oh. Like if our butt sits at the same time and the referee goes like this and it's a double pull, then even if you get up, you don't get awarded any points. Do you, Oh, you get points for pulling guard? So if you try to pull guard uh. and then you sit down, but your butt hits first uh. and then my butt hits second uh. and then you get up and then jump on top. It's a takedown? You may get a sweep point. Uh, because your butt went down, you pull guard, right? But I'm pulling guard at the same time and you stood up. So technically, it's considered a sweep. Oh, okay. So you might get points for that. Yeah. See? But if our butt sits at the same time, it's a double pull. So now we could just sit there and then whoever, right? And most of the time, people are pulling guard because they want to be on bottom. Yeah, yeah. So you get like this sort of. Both guys are sitting with their legs facing each other, yeah. you know, and then like 50 50. Yeah. And then they can kind of like determine and one yeah. person gets up. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to get points for it or anything like that. So you got to have this like this weird like leg entanglement situation. I f guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I, yeah. You know, with jujitsu rule sets, I don't, I'm not, I don't really know what I'm talking about, you know. So I see. I was just curious. Yeah. You know, but there's the, a way to game that. Yeah. And you can specifically can train that. for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Does your think, BJJ uh, school do uh, train for it? They did that right before the world championships. Oh yeah, and then the people who were fighting the worlds and stuff like that, like, all right, guys, we're gonna dedicate ten minutes doing this thing, and that's when I first heard about it. I'm like, wow, this is very good that they're doing that. Yeah, right, they're doing like yeah, yeah, yeah. There's someone behind the scenes thinking about this stuff and planning <laughs> for it, right? Oh, and then this is the thing when they mentioned it, a lot of the guys, including myself, were like, what the hell is a double pull? <laughs> And how do the points work? And what are the implications of it in a competition? Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like, I got to start kind of thinking of this way in judo, especially now that there's a lot more interest in my novices trying to compete. Uh, you know? I, see. I don't love competition for a lot of reasons. But if they're going to go out there, they should be prepared, you know? All, yeah, so these, all these are the things, ways yeah. that, yeah, I'm starting little by little. And, you know, there's so many other factors, right? As a novice, like, you're getting caught with something so much higher. Yeah, yeah. I think this is much more important as you progress and then get to a higher level because both people are skilled, both people know what to do, right? And then those little advantages here and there of getting a penalty or not getting a penalty can make or break the, yeah. the match. I see, I see. Yeah. So All right, figure, yeah. We'll figure out what to call it, you know? So you think uh, once uh, this type of curriculum is more refined, you'll make some videos about it? Oh, it would be called like winning judo matches or something like winning that. Winning judo matches, okay. It's like a... No. I see. All right. All right. So this was like a little sneak yep. peek into your brain. Like a little... A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about this kind of stuff and why it's good to train this way even if you're not competing. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about that. Mindfulness, keeping track. Yeah. Just bat awareness, spatial awareness. 
time management, there's always a clock, man. There's always yeah. a clock, you know. And people always say, like, in the streets, in the streets, there's a clock because <laughs> that's an interesting point. You know, yeah, you're grappling with somebody, and it's only a matter of time until someone jumps in. Yeah, right. You know, it's only a matter of time until a police officer comes and takes you away. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. see, right? yeah, and then. Makes yeah. sense. I mean, yeah, and then there were, like you said, there are boundaries too in the on the street, yeah. you know. Yep. Yeah, bound definitely boundaries on the street. Yeah. Like, oh, there's no out of bounds on the streets. Like, yes, there is. <laughs> right. That's funny. This yeah. mythical street. Yeah. Well, mythical streets. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll be looking forward to your videos. I want. Yeah, yep. I'm very curious how this type of uh, uh, training will go. So, anything else? No. Nope. Yeah, I gotta come up with a good title for this. I'll, I will. Yep. Hopefully, it'll be a very apt one. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.